Springtime is bringing the colors of nature to life. Make sure your images pack that vivid spring color you're looking for with luminosity masks instead of on one photo raw. They're probably a lot easier to use than you think. Let's modify a spring landscape and I'll show you how useful they can be in adjusting the color in your image. If you enjoy the video, hit that like button and as always, subscribe to our channel for all new editing tips and tricks. So I'm inside of Photo Raw and I have this springtime landscape here. And because it's a raw image, we don't have a lot of color popping through and we really just have sort of a neutral looking landscape. Well, let's bring this image to life using a few luminosity masks that can target some specific areas in our image and we can adjust them independently. So because we're modifying areas independently, let's go into our local adjustments tab here and let's use a few local adjustment layers to target those different areas within the scene. So the first local adjustment layer that I want to use is going to deal with these brighter colors, these brighter yellows, some of these greens, and especially these blues in the sky. So let's head over to this local adjustment. Let's rename this, maybe just yellows, blues. And the first thing we wanna do is we want to create that luminosity mask. So let's head into the masking options and I'll go into this lumen option. Now remember in masking, white reveals and black conceals and with the luminosity mask by default, it's going to target the brighter areas in your scene. So if I view my mask, these areas that were really bright, the highlights in the clouds and these brighter colors in the foreground, those are being targeted first, which is what we actually want. We want to avoid these darker tones with this specific mask. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to adjust the luminosity mask using the level slider here. This level slider is really helpful in figuring out where you want the masks to be applied to. So let's first talk about the level slider a bit. This far left point is going to be my shadows. This middle point is going to be my midtones. And then we have this far right point, which is the highlights. Now, if I were to pull one of these points to the right, it's going to remove that tone from my mask. You can see that by pulling the shadow tones to the right, it's removing those darker tones from my mask. It's applying that dark area of the mask to them, meaning it's concealing this adjustment from those areas. So let's just pull it up a bit more so that we get more of the area removed. And by pulling one of these points to the left, we add that tone into the mask. So if I were to pull this back, you can see it's adding back those shadow tones. And if I pull my midtones to the left, it's adding more of those midtones into the mask. So we really just need to fine tune this here. Again, we're looking to cover this bottom area of bright yellow and some green. And then we also want to cover the majority of our sky. So let's just play with these points a little bit. So that looks pretty good just like that. So let's view our photograph and you can see because we're using that default darken preset let's just reset the exposure here and let's go down to our color area in this local adjustment layer and let's just increase the saturation quite a bit and some of the vibrance now because i'm demoing it through video i just want to let you know that i'm increasing it quite a bit i know that it's really intense and quite strong but just for demo purposes, I want you to see where it's being applied to. So no worries if it's a bit strong for some people, you can always go back and readjust these sliders and tone them down. You can also do that by heading up to the local adjustment, the top of it, and you can pull back the opacity of the entire local adjustment layer. But again, I just want to let you know that I am going to be increasing these colors quite a bit just so that you can see it through the video. So I've increased the saturation and that vibrance a bit. And you can see if I turn this off and on, it's doing a great job of targeting the sky area and then our foreground. And don't worry about those weird colors in the clouds for now because we're going to use a local adjustment later on to clean those up. But this looks pretty great so far with the blues and the yellows in here. So with those brighter colors targeted, let's head into the local adjustments tab. Let's add another adjustment and let's rename this one trees hills so that we're targeting those darker greens and those darker browns and just those shadowy areas in the scene. And let's reset that exposure there. So we're just starting with a blank local adjustment. Let's go into the masking options and let's create another luminosity mask. 
Now remember earlier, I was saying that by default, it's targeting the brighter areas whenever you create a luminosity mask. If you want to right out of the gate target those darker areas, just invert the mask. So you can see now that white is covering the darker areas in the scene and those darker tones, the black of that mask is targeting the brighter areas. Now, keep in mind that with the level slider here, it's inverted, it's swapped. So now if you pull one of these points to the right, it's going to add that tone into the mask. If you pull one of these tones to the left, it will remove them from the mask. So let's add in some of the shadow tones. Get these highlights out of there. We don't want any highlights. Right about there. And one thing we can do if we need to clean up any of these other areas within our mask is we can hit B on our keyboards. That'll grab us our masking brush. Make sure your mode is set correctly. I'm set to paint out so that I'm painting away these areas in my mask. I'll just increase the brush size a bit with the bracket key on my keyboard. And then I can paint away some of these areas in the mask that I don't need. Perfect. So now let's view this photograph now. And let's add in a bit of contrast, some warmth, and some saturation to the trees, that middle ground within our scene. So I'll head down here. Let's add in just a bit of contrast. We'll go down to the structure, give it a bit of detail. And then we'll head down here to the color temperature. Let's just warm this up just a hair. And then let's go down here to the saturation. And let's just give it a little bit of saturation. And then we'll increase the vibrance to ensure that those, those underlying colors are nice and bright as well. And that looks pretty good. Let's just see what that looks like off and on. Looking good. I think it's bringing a bit of dimension and some depth to the scene. We're kind of separating the trees from that background a bit with that contrast and that detail. I think it's looking pretty good so far. Now what I want to do is just target the brighter areas, really just the highlights in these clouds here. And we're going to use that local adjustment to remove that color tint. And we're also going to pull back on these highlights so that we get rid of that true white without any detail. So let's add another adjustment. And in this local adjustment, I'll rename this clouds. Let's reset that exposure there. Go to the masking options. Luminosity mask, view the mask. And this time it's going to be a bit easier because we're targeting the brighter areas in the scene. And these areas up here are much, much brighter than anywhere else on the photograph. So let's remove any shadow tones, remove a lot of the mid tones. We're really, again, just targeting the clouds. We only want this applied to the clouds. And that's looking pretty good so far, just like that, I would say. So what I'm going to do now is just, again, I'm going to use that masking brush. I'll use Shift and X on my keyboard and increase the brush size, and I can paint away any of that foreground area that I don't need in my mask. Same with this area there. And we can see now it's just applied to those, to those clouds there. So let's view the photograph now. And now we need to clean up that color tint and remove that highlight up there, that really blown out area. So what we're going to do is we're just going to head down here to the tone, hold down the J key, pull back on the highlights, maybe add in a bit of contrast, and then head down here to the color area and we'll just pull back on the saturation pretty much all the way. Just like that. So now if we go up here and we turn our clouds local adjustment layer off and on, it's getting rid of that color tint, it's adding in some contrast, and it's making those clouds really much look much nicer in the photo. But I'm seeing now as I turn this cloud local adjustment off and on that the blue in the sky is a bit too intense. So let's just head down here to our yellows and our blues. Make sure that we're on this local adjustment layer and it's mask. And I'll hit K on my keyboard to grab my adjustment brush here. 
and I'm just going to go up to my top to modifier bar, lower the opacity to about 20 or so, maybe about 25. And let's increase the brush size quite a bit. And let's just paint this away from the sky area. That will clean up some of that harsh blue that was up there before, but while keeping our nice saturated yellows and warm greens down there. Nice, so we still have a bit of blue boost up there, but it's not as intense now that we've brushed that away and it keeps that cloud area right there a bit more natural. It was looking a little bit off before, so that just cleans that up quite a bit. And now that we've sort of dealt with the basic tone and color in our scene, we can get creative with the filters now and start adjusting the style of the image. So let's go into the effects tab and let's just add a couple filters, a couple of my favorites, one being the glow filter. I was looking at the scene earlier and I think it looks really awesome with this darker preset applied to it. And what I really enjoy about that darker preset being applied to it is it brings a bit of the white back into the clouds there. So if I turn this off and on now, brings us brings back some of that really nice white and some of that punch. But if I hold down my J key on my keyboard, there's none of that true white up there. So we've eliminated it with that local adjustment and this glow sort of brings back that nice white that we were missing when we brought in that local adjustment. Now let's add one last filter and let's add just sort of a, a common filter here, but an awesome one, the vignette filter, and let's use Big Softy to really just sort of hone the viewer's attention into the middle area here. One thing I wanna do is I'm just going to use my masking brush on my keyboard, increase the size, and let's just brush this away from those areas in the sky, just like that. So now it's only applied to that foreground area. And I think that looks a lot better in just sort of topping the image off, making sure all of the adjustments we made earlier work naturally and work together with one another. So now let's check out that before and after. Let's go to the bottom. And using a couple filters and some luminosity masks, we've really brought out the life and the color within this springtime photograph. And one last thing that I'm noticing that is just catching my eye is the overly saturated rocks here at the bottom. Let's just go back to our local tab and in our yellows and blues local adjustment, let's go into the gear icon here. Let's use these sliders here, the highlights, shadows, and skin slider to protect those different tones. So if I pull up on the highlights all the way and let's pull up on the skin a little bit, we can remove some of that yellow saturation from those rocks in there. If we turn this off and on, still have a good bit of saturation going on, but we've cleaned up some of that yellow from those rocks. So let's hit the backslash key on our keyboard. And I'm really digging it so far. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you learned a bit about luminosity masks and how you can use them to modify color on your image. I'm Dylan from On One, and I'll see you in the next lesson.